In the last few videos, we have been looking at consonants and at how we can describe consonants. In the next few videos, we will be looking at vowels and how we can describe the vowels in a language. We need to describe, first of all, their height or the height of your tongue inside of your mouth and the frontness or how much to the front or back your tongue is when you are producing the vowel. And by the way, before we begin, I just want to show you two quick things. First, there are resources on the internet for you to type all of these symbols. So you don't have to like copy paste them into assignments or when you're describing a language. I personally like this one, which is type IPA. It's really nice and easy to use. So definitely, yeah, don't just copy paste symbols. That will take you forever. There's that. And there's also plenty of really good websites that will help you uh, listen to the pronunciations of different IPA symbols. This is my personal favorite. It has all of the symbols in the tables, but also many recordings uh, by different linguists, including recordings for even the diacritics. So that one is the lowered tongue uh, diacritic, for example. So this is my favorite, but there's many examples on the internet. There's apps for your phone that you can download and so that you can get an easy help with your IPA, for example. So definitely make use of those resources. Uh, this is another website. It's from University of Victoria in Canada, and it's the same thing. It has an IPA table. You click on the symbols and then you get to hear what they sound like. So you can practice again and again. Okay, so if we go back, you look at how we've been studying consonants. And we studied this table here, places of articulation, manners of articulation. We studied some of the aggressive consonants like clicks, like ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, for example, and implosives where the air, uh, you create negative pressure in your mouth for air to go in, like for example, ah, uh, uh, bilabial, or ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, for example. But we haven't looked at this side of the table, the vowels. These are the main vowels of the IPA chart. And there's three things that we're going to do to describe them. The first one is, look at the height. Vowels can be high, if they're in the higher part of the triangle, mid, if they're in the mid region, or low, if they're in the lower region. What does the height mean? Try to say, I'm going to say the sounds E and A ah in quick succession, and you do it as well, so that you can feel how your tongue goes up and down, up in E and down in A. Ah. E, A, E, A, E, A, E, A. <laughs> you can feel how your tongue goes up and down. So high means that your tongue is higher in your mouth. Low means that the tongue is lower. I'm going to say uh, this one is Ooh, and this one is the ah in stop, for example. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. You'll feel how your tongue again goes up and down. So that's what height means. Um, and by the way, the table also has these terms closed and open because that's what your jaw is doing. When it's a high vowel, the jaw usually closes a little bit. E -a, e -a, closed open e -a. but we're going to be using the height of the tongue as the reference high mid all this region region is mid and low so that's height the second coordinate that we use is the position of your tongue um, relative to whether it's towards the front of your mouth or the back of your mouth this symbol here is E. This one is U. So I'm going to say them in succession, and you do so as well, so that you can feel the tongue going front and back, front and back. E -u -e -u -e -u. <laughs> so you can probably feel your tongue again going back and forth. You can also feel it with these. This is E. This is O. E -o -e -o. So your tongue goes back and forth. So within your mouth, your tongue can be going up or down and back and forth. 
And those are the two main things that we're going to be looking at. A third thing the vowels can do is be rounded or not. And of course, the articulator that gets rounded is your lips. If you say a vowel like e, e, your lips are spread. E. If you say something like u, u, your lips become rounded. Please give it a try. E, u, u, u. <laughs> you also feel it with a o. E, u, e, u. <laughs> So the roundness of a vowel is what your lips are doing as you produce it. And as the chart helpfully says, the symbols on the right are rounded. So o, o are rounded, but e towards the left and a towards the left are not rounded. Uh, for example, you might be familiar with this sound if you've studied French, this is a rounded this is E, but with rounded lips. Let me show you. I'm going to start with unrounded lips, and then I'm going to round them without moving my tongue. E <laughs> this rounded vowel is the one in rue, for example, in road in French. And yeah, so uh, the ones on the right, like u, like o, like u, like u. In, from German, for example, U, these are rounded. And the ones on the left, like E, E, are unrounded. This one um, is, exists in Mandarin, for example. This is the one in G, uh, for example. So, we're going to use those three dimensions to describe vowels. For example, U is a high back rounded vowel. O is a high mid back rounded vowel. Please take a moment to try to describe these vowels, this one, this one, and this one using these three coordinates. And by the way, this is the vowel that in American English corresponds to stop. This one corresponds to dress and this one corresponds to bean. Stop, dress, bean. A, E. E. Please fill these out. Please stop with it. All right. So this one, as you can see, is low, back, and it's on the left, so it's unrounded. Uh, stop. It's not rounded lips. It is uh, lips like spread out. The one in dress is not rounded either. It's unrounded. This one is low mid and more towards the front. This one, E, is high front and unrounded. E with lips spread. All right. By the way, the system of vowels of the IPA was made for French. So these vowels uh, describe Romans vowels very well. They also describe, for example, Spanish vowels very well, Romans vowels in general. So a word like papa, potato, has this vowel here. This is an a, ah, a, ah, papa. <laughs> this one is the e in pipa, pipa, e, a. Ah. This one is the u in Lucha, lucha, struggle. U a. Um, we have words in French, so they were originally made for French. This is the e in c. This is the u in su, and this is the u in su. No. And by the way, when you have a word where if you change just one sound, it changes meaning, we call that a minimal pair. These two words in German are minimal pairs because if you change this sound for this sound, the meaning changes. If you change schon into schön, schön with rounding, the meaning changes from already to beautiful. 
By the way, there's a very special vowel, which is the most common vowel in English, which is the schwa. This one is like the most neutral position where your tongue is in the middle, in both, like in the middle from front to back and in the middle from high to low. Uh, uh. <laughs> this is the vowel in the first and last syllables of banana. Uh, b, banana, banana. This is the one in the second syllable of memory, memory, memory. So the schwa is the most common vowel in English. Vowels can be described, again, using three uh, types of information. Their height, the height of your tongue, whether it's high, mid, or low. The frontness of your tongue, whether the tongue is towards the front, mid, or back. And the roundness of your lips, whether your lips are rounded or not when you produce it. The most common vowel in English is a schwa, which is sort of in the middle. It's mid height and mid frontness backness. When describing English, we're going to need a fourth piece of information, which is whether our muscles are lax or tense. That's what we'll study in the next video.